Catherine Trotter, Mary Picks, and Della Riviere Manley, known informally as the Female Wits, are three of the most important playwrights of the English Restoration and helped to forever change the culture of theater. First, however, we must talk about their predecessor, Afra Ben. Afra Ben was born in 1640 and is probably best known for her novel, Orunoko, a short work of fiction about an African man being tricked into slavery. Before she started writing, she was actually a British spy acting in Antwerp, and it's believed that she was betrayed by an acquaintance and turned into the Dutch. I'm not sure if this is imperative to her history as a writer, but it's pretty cool so I didn't want to exclude it. Ben had her first play, The Forked Marriage, successfully produced in 1671, and her most successful play, The Rover, produced in 1681. She's also known for writing The Emperor of the Moon in 1687. As one might expect of the time, some of Ben's works were panned by traditionalist critics who didn't believe that women could write as well as men. Ben dismissed these critics by explaining that the reason women weren't known for writing was due to their exclusion in the education system. It should also be noted that there were some other women writers of the time as well, although they were never as successful or prolific as Ben. Ben continued to defend women writers and held the belief that women should be offered higher education throughout her life. Ben died in 1689, but the torch was quickly passed on. This brings us to the notorious female wits. All three of the female wits began producing plays within just a few years of each other, in the mid-1690s. From what I could find, the first one to produce one of their plays was Catherine Trotter. She published her play Agnes de Castro in 1693, and it was produced in 1695 when Trotter was only 16 years old. When I was 16, I was in high school failing Spanish. The next year, 1696, would be very busy. Mary Picks would write and produce her first play, Ibrahim, the 13th Emperor of the Turks, and Della Revere Manley would write and produce both The Lost Lover, or The Jealous Husband, and The Royal Mischief. Shortly after these productions, the female wits would be written and produced in the same season. This play, which was primarily a parody of Manley's The Royal Mischief, was written to satirize and insult these three women specifically. Some that have analyzed the play say that the play could also be seen as insulting to all women of the time, and that it once again asserted the belief that women should not and could not be serious writers. The man who wrote it, however, must not have been very brave, as it was published anonymously the author only being known as Mr. W.M. Each of the women have a character in the play that is based on them, and the characters' names were meant to mock the respective authors, like Mrs. Eatswell being a stand-in for Manly. Eventually, the name The Female Wits gained a positive connotation, signaling a wave of new female writers rather than a sarcastic insult representing outdated beliefs. Bigots would not be able to stop The Female Wits. All three women would continue to write into the 18th century. Mary Picks, the most successful of them, would go on to be involved in over a dozen plays. One of her most popular works, The Bow Defeated, was even remade in 2018 called The Fantastic Follies of Mrs. Rich. Catherine Trotter would write at least three more plays and a series of theological treaties, and Della Riviere Manley would write at least two more plays. Manley, however, would soon become the most controversial of the trio. Her novel, The New Atalantis, would get her arrested for a short time due to accusations of libel against some British fuddy-duddies, and later her autobiography, The Adventures of Ravella, would be considered pornographic for its so-called sexual exploitation of women and reversed sexual roles. These two books gave her quite the reputation, but she continued her career in writing by contributing periodicals to the female tattler. All three of these women helped to make permanent changes in both the world of literacy and the world of theater, despite attacks from the less progressive members of their society. Although these women are not often talked about today, if it weren't for them writing so much and defending their place in society as playwrights and authors, it may have taken much longer for women to be respected as capable writers with just as much to offer the world as men.